HTC's 2014 flagship, the One M8, is a beautifully crafted Android smartphone, but it sure is big. So, for those who put a premium on pocket space, or pocket change, HTC has crafted a smaller alternative that brings the One M8's design language to the mid-size category. But the landscape of mini smartphones is dotted with disappointment, so is this just another compromise in disguise? Let's find out together. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the HTC One Mini 2. If you're like us, carrying the One Mini 2 will make you feel like you're getting away with something. Not since Sony's Xperia Z1 Compact have we encountered such a high-end feel in a mid-sized phone. The One Mini 2's casing is 70% aluminum, available in three colors, with a plastic border that looks much better here than it did on last year's One Mini. We like the design here even more than the flagship M8. It's simpler, cleaner, but no less luxurious. It's light without being chintzy, thin but still grippable. For our average hands, it's the perfect size for one-handed use. If you're an iPhone user considering the leap to Android, this thing's going to get your attention. If there's a handicap with the build, it's the buttons. The volume rocker sits naturally under the thumb, but the power standby key is still located up top, which is still pretty awkward on a device as tall as this. None of the keys has terribly good travel or feedback. That said, our hardware here is pre-release, so that may change in the production version. The specs, though, are set in stone, and here we see the One Mini 2's mid-range routes more clearly. Its heartbeat comes from a Snapdragon 400 system on a chip, backed up by an acceptable gig of RAM and 16 gigs of onboard storage, with about 10 of those user accessible. Fortunately, there's microSD expansion here for up to 128 gigs of music, movies, and other media. Or you can stream the same over HSPA or LTE in certain markets, or dual-band 802.11, ABGNN, everywhere Wi-Fi is available. You'll watch that media on a 4.5-inch Super LCD 2 that's quite vibrant when it wants to be, but everything from the viewing angles to the milky gray blacks to the 720p resolution is straight up middle of the road. Making up for that average spec sheet is an above average software experience. Android is getting so good that 4.4.2 doesn't need crazy hardware to run well, but it's surprising how nicely HTC's Sense 6 runs atop it here. The day-to-day -day experience is as fluid as you can find on most flagships, and HTC's modern flair is a welcome reprieve from the sameness of stock KitKat. You get a lot of added utility from Sense customizations. During our testing, the HTC browser came in handy when Chrome couldn't handle a live video feed, and the consistent visual cues across all the core apps unified the whole experience, making the Mini 2 seem like something more than just another Android phone. While we'd still like more options for accent colors, particularly in blink feed, using the software is as much a pleasure here as it is on the One M8. And that's high praise. Sadly, we can't say the same for the 13 megapixel camera. If you're interested in how this shooter measures up to the M8's ultra pixel camera, we go into more detail on our Mini 2 versus M8 comparison video and in a dedicated photo shootout at Pocket Now, linked in the description. Taken by itself, the One Mini 2's camera is, well, the best word is probably adequate. Pictures in good lighting are fine. The camera defaults to 9.6 megapixels if you want to preserve the wide aspect ratio, but you can manually crank it up to 13 megapixels if you want, and you'll get all the added zoomability that extra resolution provides. But colors, on the whole, fall on the blah side. They're less vibrant than in real life, with brightly lit areas tending to overexpose. And both problems are exacerbated by the too aggressive HDR mode and the propensity of HTC's exposure controls to dramatically overcompensate when using tap to focus. Low light shooting is flat out bad, even in dedicated night mode, which seems to have little or no effect on the dim, noisy end results. None of this should be a surprise, unless you revere resolution above all else. This is, after all, the same exact camera as found in HTC's decidedly mid-range Desire 816. It is possible to take good photos with the One Mini 2, but while it's fun to try thanks to the excellent feature-packed viewfinder software, it's not easy. 
That's true of the 5 megapixel front facer as well, no matter how fun the eye enhancer is. All this holds true for video as well. Be advised though that most of these samples are 720p, the default out of the box setting. Our full review at Pocket Now features a proper video sample reel in full resolution. The launch of HTC's new Zoe app this summer will help compensate for this camera's shortcomings, like the outstanding viewfinder and gallery features already do. But on the whole, we're just not impressed by this shooter's results. We are impressed pretty much everywhere else. HTC has of course brought back Boom Sound, whose software brings an added oomph to playback through earbuds. On the hardware front, the front-firing speakers aren't quite as throaty as the bigger chambers on the 1M8, but they're worlds better than anything else on the market. That's evident in both media playback and gaming, which the One Mini 2 also handles with aplomb. While the more intense graphics of some titles aren't always available, gameplay is quite smooth with very few, if any, frame drops or skips. We've only been able to crash a game once, and only by running it immediately after another memory-intensive title. Otherwise, it's been smooth sailing, and for respectable spans, too. We've been able to consistently get a full day's usage out of the phone, and even with heavy use, including streaming HD video over 3G for an hour, we were able to break eight hours before powering down. How about the phone? Well, two weeks of testing on AT&T's HSPA network in both New York City and Greater Boston haven't turned up any problems with reception. And call quality is terrific on both ends, in earpiece and loudspeaker modes. We're not able to test LTE performance as the One Mini 2 lacks the proper 4G bands for the US. We expect that to change if and when the One Mini 2 makes it to American shores. The One Mini 2 will launch in Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and North Asia in June, and HTC tells us it'll be available for about £360. That's significantly cheaper than the £530 3 is asking for the One M8 at full retail, and the One Mini 2 will also obviously come in significantly cheaper up front with a contract. Still, there's no getting around it. If you consider that the aforementioned Xperia Z1 Compact is selling for about the same price with a markedly better camera, faster hardware, and waterproofing to boot, the One Mini 2 certainly feels overpriced. HTC just doesn't bring enough with this smartphone to overcome that significant imbalance. But it is an aluminum-clad smartphone with a super premium feel, a fresh, responsive Android build, and best-in-class onboard audio. HTC sought to bring the One M8 experience to a mid-sized device and in large part, it succeeded. If you're a person of specific tastes and nothing else will do, and you're willing to splurge a little, you're not likely to be disappointed. Be sure to check out our HTC One Mini versus HTC One M8 video here on YouTube and our full written review at Pocket Now linked in the description below. Also, don't miss Adam Lane's photo comparison between samples from the One M8 and the One Mini 2 if you want a closer look at how the pictures between these devices vary. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.